All right. Uh, so once again, uh, thank you each one for being here and connecting to the uh, um, orientation sessions. Uh, I hope that it's been a blessing so far and uh, we'll continue to learn the week and eventually as our courses uh, start next Monday. Um, so right now we are going to uh, a couple of very key subjects from this book or the APC publication called as Laying the Axe to the Root. Uh, and we are understanding that as believers, we may still carry certain attitudes and uh, the manifestation or the presentation of those attitudes uh, through certain behaviors or actions from our end. So we saw how uh, self can be um, very, self can be a hindrance in us truly serving God in the manner that pleases him. Uh, similarly, this morning we have looked at jealousy, uh, carrying a heart of jealousy that it will not honor God in any way. Uh, right now we are going to look at the subject of pride and how even as believers, sometimes pride, the spirit of pride or um, there can be pride in our hearts and uh, we may not even have any idea that we are functioning with pride. But when we identify these things, it is helpful for us to deal with them. It is helpful for us to even uproot these attitudes from our hearts. Okay, so let's pray and then we will begin. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, and uh, Lord, we honor you, Lord, for the opportunities that you give us to spend time in your word. Lord, we thank you that your word is powerful, Lord, that it is a double-edged sword. As we hear your word, as we think about your word, Lord, we know that your word will do a deep work in our hearts, Lord. And Father God, as we learn about this attitude of pride, we pray, God, that, uh, Lord, all, all the um, uh, thoughts in our, in our minds, all the, uh, Lord, the standards in our heart, Father, which does not honor and glorify you, that those things may be removed, that those things may be uprooted, Father God. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to minister to each one of us as we hear uh, uh, Lord, what we are going to go through this session. Thank you, Lord. Thank you once again for this time. Uh, we speak a blessing upon each other. And Lord, we commit this entire session into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, coming to pride, we understand that, you know, pride is uh, something that either we have, we have, uh, functioned in or we have observed in, a, in the lives of other people. And uh, it's, it's definitely not nice to experience pride, um, especially when someone is being very, um, you know, prideful towards in matters and we are observing that. So uh, how do we define pride? Uh, just one moment, please. And just Yeah, that's better. So how do we define pride? So pride in simple words can be defined as uh, arrogance. It can be defined as being very um, haughty. These are the words that we use uh, to describe pride. Or we could even say that it's an attitude where somebody exalts themselves or somebody is uh, the boasting kind, like they love to boast about themselves. They love to boast about their own skills, their talents, their experiences, uh, and uh, their abilities. So pride comes across in this manner. And uh, in the word of God, we are told that there are some things that believers should not engage in. Uh, and in, in that list is also something known as the pride of life. And the Bible says that the pride of life is not from God. That pride of life is of the world. So for us as believers, you know, to have these 
kind of uh, behaviors you know that that describe pride is not godly because uh, the bible says that these things are of the world all right so we we will begin to understand you know what the results of pride are and why we must really not walk in pride eventually we'll touch on those sections now talking a little bit more about pride um when we say jealousy it's a little bit more easier to identify you know we uh, can recognize it in ourselves when we are jealous of someone it's easier to pick it up but when we say pride uh, it's a little more subtle like we ourselves will not realize that we are carrying pride okay but as uh, pastor jay kumar was sharing yesterday when we are not well uh, we may not recognize that and and say that i am suffering from this infection or that infection but when you go to the doctor they will be able to look at some of the symptoms or you know the blood reports and then they can predict you know, what the condition could be similarly for us to understand that you know we are carrying pride in our hearts it's not easy to diagnose but through certain behaviors through certain attitudes we'll be able to recognize it now the bible tells us that there are some things that god um dislikes is a softer word but the bible uses the term hates okay now we don't want to be in that category that god hates okay we want to be in the category that where god loves so if we are walking in certain attitudes um that please god we are happy but the bible tells us that um in proverbs 6:16 to verse 19 i'll just read two verses there these six things the lord hates yes seven are an abomination to him and it begins with a proud look okay a proud look this is on page 39 of your printed publications and uh, uh, the students who are online can follow along through your pdfs so you can look at the page number that is given in the pdf so a proud look a proud look is something that god hates and in the bible we use a term called abomination things that god strongly dislikes okay is known as an abomination and we would uh, look at things such as you know lust or jealousy or um, uh, you know um, what else uh, self yeah even self is somewhat subtle but things like um, uh jealousy and uh, you know things like lust very easily we can say that god hates it but carrying pride in us um is also an abomination but we find it harder to recognize when there is pride in us okay but the bible is very clear that god hates pride uh, and who is that one person who was rejected from heaven because of his pride who was that satan you're right so satan lucifer god sent him out of heaven because of his pride so uh, you see pride is um you know it it keeps us away from god and uh, that's what happened to lucifer so there's a big warning to each of us as believers that we must get rid of any hint of pride in our hearts and in our lives now james chapter 4 and verse 6 uh, it's a beautiful scripture if any of you would like to read it you can um please feel comfortable if you have the mic with you read into it uh, james chapter 4 and verse 6 but he gives more grace therefore he says god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble okay sure okay so here we um see that god resists the proud we've already seen that god hates pride 
adding to that scriptures tell us god resists the proud which means that um you can imagine you know there are um two teams okay there are two teams when you play the tug of war uh, you all must know, may know that uh, there's a rope and then there are two teams you're pulling that side this side what are what are both the teams doing they're pulling against each other isn't it so that is why you have to put so much of effort to actually pull the rope towards yourself because somebody else is pulling on the other side so what happens when we carry pride it's almost like we are pulling against god now nobody wants to be on the uh, opposing side of god we all love that scripture which says god is for us okay god is for us and not against us we want god to be with us and we want to be on god's team but what does pride do it puts us against god because what starts to happen god begins to resist us okay and that's a very um scary thought to have god on the opposite team because he is the almighty and you don't want to be against god and god pulling against you but the scriptures are telling us when we carry pride uh, god resists the proud but there's another encouraging scripture there which says that he gives grace to the humble okay he gives grace to the humble so what is grace grace um is defined in many ways in the word of god but here the word grace in fact it says he gives more grace grace is the ability to do things for god so god gives us the ability to serve him whether it is um you know uh, uh, like serving in in way, small ways where we may be cleaning putting up chairs in the church or maybe uh, other ways depending on the skills that god gives us leading worship preaching praying for somebody counseling uh, you know prophesying over their lives different ways god gives the ability god gives the grace and scriptures are telling more grace meaning the more humble we are god will increase our ability right god will increase our capacity he will increase our opportunities so for us to keep growing higher in god we have to go more humble in his presence but when we become proud what happens the balance you know the scales uh, tilt so we are trying to rise up on our own and god is not going to support that but when we become humble what happens god begins to support us and the scripture says he gives more grace so when he finds humility he will add to our abilities and he will cause us to increase in the things that we want to do for him and for his kingdom so that is how god works so we must be really careful about pride in our hearts you know sometimes we want to do the right things so let's say we we want to worship or we want to preach uh, or we want to pray for somebody now just take the example of prayer we may be praying for someone but what is there in our hearts is more important you know the why question what is whatever we are doing but the why question why are we doing that people may not be able to see why we are doing certain things isn't it uh, but in our hearts we know so when we are praying for someone the reason may be that we want to bless that person or uh, we we really want god's power to be released in that person's life or we may have uh, uh, certain attitudes in our hearts where we want to show off you know how good our prayer is or you know how great our language is or um, oh look at me uh, i i care for people others can observe this so we may have uh, negative ideas as well in our hearts now people outside may never know that but god sees the heart remember that's what scripture says man sees the the uh, outward appearance the face but god sees the heart and in our hearts uh, even when we do the right things 
if we are motivated by the wrong attitudes it is never pleasing to the lord so we could be doing ministry we could be doing god's work but we could be doing it all in pride to compete with others to show that we are great or you know to show that i've accomplished so much for god's glory remember yesterday a pastor had mentioned one question which we have to ask ourselves is in all my dreams who is the hero do i want to be seen as oh this person served god so greatly this person achieved so much for god i want my photo to be you know uh, posted everywhere everyone to know my name so when we are functioning with that attitude somewhere we are missing the point the point is not for us to be exalted the point is to glorify and honor the lord isn't it so uh, this is how we we um, must understand that pride is something that we should stay away from and it can be really subtle the way it creeps up in our lives so if we want the divine grace of god in our lives uh, we must become more and more humble now when we read about leaders in the bible we recognize that generally the people who were good leaders were all very humble uh, and uh, you know very meek uh, personalities for example moses the bible talks about moses and says um, in the um, you know um, book of numbers numbers 12 and verse 3 i'll just uh, uh, quickly read that it says now the man moses was very humble more than all men who were on the face of the earth so moses led thousands of people a very successful and a very powerful leader in a crisis situation and season he led thousands of people to safety and um, you know help them to kind of let them when they sustained themselves in the wilderness and all that but what does the bible say about him he was very humble okay he he was a very meek person so one of the requirements for leadership is humility the more humble we are uh, the the stronger example we can be for the lord so uh, these are things that you know we can learn early in our journey uh, with uh, god and it will really be a blessing to us as well as to others now let's see what are the manifestations of pride so i told us it is somewhat difficult to identify pride you know from the outside but through certain behaviors it's possible to recognize it so what are these um manifestations or how does it make itself known pride so the first way is uh being stubborn okay or being obstinate that's another word so be stubborn so a stubborn attitude uh reveals pride now yes the bible talks about a godly stubbornness like yesterday in the afternoon session we were talking about uh, uh, some of god's generals and we talked about you know amy semple uh, macpherson and we said how uh, she went through uh, uh, like she faced the loss of her husband and after that you know through disappointment it could have been it it would have been easy for her to give up on life and not to serve god but you know we saw how she did not want to give up ministry so she did her best uh, she even took her children when she went out uh, for evangelism and uh, um, you know uh, praying for people and and things like that so you can recognize a sort of a godly stubbornness where she did not let go of the right thing so there is a godly stubbornness which is okay right if you remember um uh samuel's mother hana she was praying in the temple and the priest looked at her and said what is wrong with you you know this looks like a drunk woman like go back and so she was not receiving the acceptance of her uh of the people 
at that time and yet she continued in prayer so there is a godly stubbornness which is good and right but we are talking about uh, an ungodly stubbornness where we are not willing to listen where we are not willing to consider the correction or the opinions of other people so this is something that god is not happy about okay so stubbornness so if there is stubbornness in our attitude then we really have to check and see uh, what's happening you know why am i stubborn uh, in in certain aspects why is it that i cannot let go uh, or listen to people or accept correction uh, and we may we should ask god to help us deal with that stubbornness so when uh, this king known as nebuchadnezzar he was so stubborn god had to bring him down so he was given power and position but we read about him in the book of daniel that god because of his pride god had to really uh, strip him of that authority and power which was given to him so stubbornness uh, is not a good attitude now how can stubbornness manifest in our relationships uh, in certain ways like let's say we have friends or we have family uh, where people tell us hey uh, this this is my idea okay i have a suggestion why can't we do things like this but stubbornness will show up in a way where we say okay you don't have to say anything i already know okay this is what we are going to do and this is what we will do so you're stubborn you're not ready to listen to something different or something new a, a suggestion um maybe even between husbands and wives uh maybe the husband has some good ideas but the wife is unwilling to listen no everything has to be done the way i want it to be done or vice versa uh, the uh, wife has ideas and the husband is not listening so this is the way in which stubbornness can reveal itself and it's dangerous because you know, sometimes we may miss out on the early corrections that are required uh, in our walk with the lord and uh, these early corrections could help us develop ourselves better as we uh, journey further with god so stubbornness is something that we must look for and and see whether we are behaving in this manner uh, second thing is please feel free to ask questions if at all you have any uh, whether um, questions are from our online students or they are from uh, here in person students feel free to ask questions next is arrogance okay arrogance arrogance is you could um, sort of look at another word that goes with it which is overconfidence overconfidence so overconfidence is when we grade ourselves as um qualified when others are still saying that hey you need to wait you need to train or you need some more time but overconfidence says i already know i'll do it i'm good enough i can handle it i will do it you know it's um like uh, a young person who is now moving into adulthood but just because they're moving into adulthood doesn't mean that you know they will be qualified for uh, different things like maybe their parents still think that uh, they should not have a mobile phone yet or their parents still think that okay you wait uh, we will get you a bike after another year or um, maybe the government has certain rules and says you can only get a driving license at the age of whatever uh, 18 or something like that but overconfidence will be such that it'll go against all these these uh, um reasonable requirements and the y- young person may say something like i i know i can drive i will drive i don't care about the government's license or i know i need a mobile phone i will go with it i don't care about what my parents are saying right 
So just an example for us to understand where we are overconfident and we are not ready to listen uh, uh, to what others or elders uh, or people who are mature in the Lord have to say. So overconfidence is another manner in which uh, we will see pride manifesting itself. Now we can look at another um, manifestation which is rebellion. Okay, rebellion. So what is rebellion? Rebellion is also all these words <coughs> are somewhat connected. So you might find uh, that there is a seeming overlap. However, uh, there are differences. So rebellion is when one is um, going against what has been expected of them. Or rebellion is also when someone is obeying partially, in, like in the case of Saul. So there was a time when God told Saul, uh, gave him instructions and said, you know, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, you go and you destroy the Amalekites and you make sure that everything is destroyed. Okay. But what did Saul do? He did not listen to God's full instruction. He went, he won over the Amalekites, but there were some things that he did not destroy. He just brought it back with himself. And when he was asked, why did you do this, Saul? You know, why didn't you completely obey what I told you to do? So he gave an excuse. He said to God, God, I thought I will offer this as, um, you know, like a sacrifice or an offering to you. The answer sounds very godly, but God knows our hearts. God knew that he had actually disobeyed. He obeyed 90%. 10%, he didn't obey. But in the sight of God, that was rebellion. Partial obedience sometimes is also rebellion against God. And we know what happened in the case of Saul. It was God's heart to choose Saul. It was God's heart to appoint him as a king. It was God's heart to uh, entrust his people to Saul. But what was the problem with Saul? An attitude of rebellion. Just doing his own thing. God is saying something, but he's not willing to listen. It's as if he was saying, I know better. Yeah, God is saying, but I know better. I'll do whatever I want to do. And this went on and on and on and on. God gave him a lot of grace, a lot of time. Finally, he said, I'm so sad about Saul. I will have to bring in somebody else. And so God had to pick a David and position him. So you see, rebellion is when we are disobedient to what God wants us to do. So it may be partial obedience, which we are um, giving unto the Lord. But again, that's not good enough. When God says something, he expects us to be fully obedient to what he's asking us to do. Right? So who is the other person um, whom we can classify under the category of rebellion in the Bible? Anyone else who comes to your mind? Rebellious. Very rebellious. Lucifer. Sorry? Lucifer's sister. Saul. Saul, we, we spoke about him. Who else? Lucifer. Anyone else? Lucifer. Yeah, please be loud. Lucifer. Okay, very good. Yeah, so we already mentioned Lucifer, right? Uh, pride and then also rebellion against God. He um, instigated other angels also to go against God. So we know the, we know what happened. Lucifer with his fallen angels were thrown from heaven. So rebellion, God hates pride, God hates rebellion, right? So uh, these are things that we would need to be careful about. Now, talking about rebellion, I think um, in the context, especially the context of parents and children, um, 
at a certain age usually there's a lot of rebellion now maybe because the kids think that we already know parents are so old fashioned they don't even know technology they don't know how to use whatsapp and they are telling me you know uh, what to do what not to do but the bible says you know obey your parents in the lord they may be old fashioned they may be uh, you know a foreign technology may be foreign to them but still the bible teaches us that god has placed godly authority in our lives whether they are parents or uh, you know uh, spiritual leadership there is accountability that we have you know uh, in those relationships and we must uh, be mindful of it okay so rebellion is something that we must be away from now let me quickly look at uh, the chat here uh, there seem to be some questions i'm um, of church pastor have pride and he thinks that he knows everything how to deal with that okay so um achira i would say you could pray for your pastor if you sense you know something like this uh, however the bible says that when there is an accusation against a leader uh, it is not unless there are like at least two people or more then it should not be entertained okay so uh, i would just say you pray and uh, if there are more people who have a similar similar um, observation then it has to be addressed in the right way because the scriptures teach us that um, people who are in leadership are chosen by god and they are honored so the way we address matters with them has to be done in the right way so the best thing to do is to keep it in prayer many others have a similar observation then you may need to approach another leader who can take the matter in a in a nice way in a polite way to the church pastor okay so that that is how we would need to approach this matter now the other question uh, daniel is asking is if we are stubborn for something which is correct the reason for being stubborn is only for the reason that wrong things don't take place is it correct so uh, daniel i am just trying to um, uh, understand because uh, you're probably talking about a specific uh, situation and um, what i would say is that you know we can be stubborn in prayer but in our behavior with people in our relationships it's not good to display that stubbornness okay so uh, keep that stubbornness in prayer maybe something is going on which you are not happy about uh, you keep doing the right thing and you pray and trust god to bring a change in that situation just because you are stubborn for the right thing uh, it does not justify bad behavior from our end so that's uh, what i would say i hope uh, you agree with me and uh, we'll quickly take deepa's uh, question yes uh, sister deepa please go ahead unmute and ask please yeah um i want to uh, also contribute that giazi also rebel against his master yeah. sorry to interrupt brother success we we didn't hear you completely uh, so okay, okay can, you can, can you hear me now you can go first and then uh, deepa can ask a question please go ahead okay um i want to break in this uh, scenario giazi rebel against his master sorry is he Gehazi, Gehazi, Gehazi. Is it? Gehazi rebel against his master. Uh, rebel against the master I got. Who? Yeah. That is Gehazi, Gehazi. Gehazi, Gehazi. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody typed it in the chat. Gehazi. I hear you better now. Um, Gehazi. I I would say so. yeah because uh, he did not even check with his master and he went to collect uh, you know money uh, but uh, god knows all things right so in the spirit uh, uh, his master was able to look into this matter and he rebuked him so i would say yes that is rebellion 
All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Success. Uh, Deep, uh, Sister Deepa, did you want to ask something? Okay, we, we will uh, take up a question later. Uh, Par Parumita, if a church pastor is disrespectful towards others and curses a person, will it harm the person being cursed? Okay, so, um, see the Bible says that a curse without a cause will not alight, which simply means that when there is a curse, right, which is spoken on anyone. If they have not done anything wrong, it won't affect them. Okay, so I, I would just say that uh, for this question that was asked. Okay, let's proceed. I'll uh, cover more ground and then in the end we can take up some more questions. So uh, we've understood now, we've said that um, when we are uh, proud, then we may behave uh, stubbornly, we may behave with arrogance or overconfidence, or we may behave um, in rebellion. Okay? So now there are a few more attitudes which will reveal pride in our hearts. What are those attitudes? Being scornful. Uh, being scornful is to, you know, um, have like negative opinions about people, about things where we are just grumbling, putting people down and, and we are saying, oh, what is it? What big preaching they did? What big worship leading they did? You know, it's nothing I can do better. So in this way, we, we are kind of uh, speaking against people, uh, uh, speaking low of people, making derogatory remarks uh, uh, about people. This also is, it stems from pride because we think we are better. We think we know better, right? We think we deserve better. So others, we can put them down very easily. But uh, this kind of a uh, scornful behavior is also coming from pride. And God does not like uh, those who are scorners, those who are Another word which is used is scoffers. Uh, so we must stay away from this. All right. Now, the next way that pride will manifest itself is self-righteousness or hypocrisy. So what is this? A classic example of self-righteousness. Uh, any, any thoughts? Self-righteous people in the Bible, who would you think of immediately? Pharisees, we would say, hey, don't behave like a Pharisee. Why? Because Pharisees, what do they do? Again, they think that they are great. You know, they are very learned. All the others are um, so ill-informed. They, they are not educated in the things of God. So the Bible talks so much about the Pharisees and their hypocrisy. So uh, again, in our attitudes, when we are with people, we may think that, uh, my Bible knowledge is better than this person's Bible knowledge or my church is better than that person's church or, uh, you know, my uh, anointing is greater than that person's anointing or my calling is bigger than that person's calling. So what's happening? There is this whole attitude where we are judging that I am the best. Everybody else, yeah, they're there, but, you know, I'm the best. So, and that comes out when we pray, uh, when, when we, remember the prayers that we see of, of uh, uh, that Jesus rebuked, uh, Lord, um, I'm giving you so much, but this person is only giving you little money. These were the kind of things that the Pharisees said, then uh, they, they just made their ego feel better. So uh, an attitude like a Pharisee is also something that can manifest when we carry pride in our hearts. And the Pharisees were also known for hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when they are telling others, don't do this, don't do that, but they themselves are doing it. Okay. So uh, in the matters of worship, they were instructing everyone. This is how you should worship God. This is the right way to worship God. 
but they themselves would go and uh, you know have uh, some sinful uh, things going on and come back as if nothing happened so the standards were varying for them and the other people whom they were expecting so jesus rebuked them and uh, uh, he rebuked them for their hypocrisy so hypocrisy is again where we we want others to live by certain things which we will not follow okay so uh, that again is not nice and uh, god does not want us to behave that way so before we judge others we must really ask ourselves the question am i am i doing the right thing you know i i am judging somebody else but um, am i right in the sight of the lord so when we think this way we can avoid being a hypocrite or being uh, carrying or demonstrating the attitude of a pharisee so these are all ways in which a uh, pride will manifest itself now the next manner is being contentious or being quarrelsome you know or being argumentative everything that is said there's an argument never the the um uh, thoughts are never easily received mm. right where we are always challenging how can you say that there's a better way of doing it so when we are looking for improvement we understand but if there's always a quarrel about everything then there's a problem okay so we can check ourselves am i quarrelsome am i um, you know contending with everyone that i meet uh, so if that is happening a lot i really have to check why why is this happening you know how am i what is my own self image how am i looking at people okay so these are questions that we could ask then two more ways in which it manifests one is prejudice prejudice means partiality being biased where we may um or support a, a certain class of people for example if i'm very rich then i only support the rich people and i don't support those who are poor or if i come from you know a certain background and a community only support those people i don't support the other people what's happening i'm creating a bias i'm creating disunity among people that is prejudice okay causing biases uh, which is also a manifestation of pride and the next is being high minded or exclusive where um if we again think that um uh, we we are very great okay so not everybody can understand us not everybody can talk uh, uh, to us so we behave very exclusive like uh, i'm something special i'm superior okay so we carry that attitude where others are also not able to uh, really interact with us or approach us easily so on and so forth so we can check these attitudes and um, uh, pray and repent before god and say god heal my heart i don't know why this is happening but i repent and cleanse me from this attitude of pride so what will pride do the bible says many things already we saw god will resist us if we carry pride but the bible also says that shame is shame will follow pride destruction will follow pride in our lives uh pride can lead to self deception and that is very dangerous you know what is self deception self deception is when we have deceived ourselves everybody else can see the problem that i have except me because i have convinced myself that there is no problem everyone's trying to help everyone's trying to counsel everyone's trying to tell hey you need to change this you need to let go of this but i have convinced myself i have no problem i'm not going to listen to anybody and self deception is also the problem of satan he has deceived himself remember the bible talks about lucifer going into self deception right he thought he can become greater than god he can sit on god's throne right so he came up with all these thoughts which are wrong and he was just not willing to listen so self deception will follow pride um, we have to be careful about all this so i'm just going to um, you know summarize uh, what we need to do instead of pride we need to be humble we have to walk with a humble spirit and understand that humility or meekness is the real strength 
what is the real strength humility is the real strength which we can carry always maintain a um, servant heart meaning we want to serve what is the kind of leadership jesus promoted or taught about servant leadership if you want to be first you should be last so humility servant heart servant leadership humble yourself have the right estimation about yourself we are not saying that we must put ourselves down but we are saying have a, a a proper judgment of ourselves maybe in certain things we are good we do have experience but we should recognize that there could be people who have better experience than us more knowledge than us and in the same way you look at somebody maybe they don't have that experience but with a humble spirit you can guide them and lead them instead of saying you don't know i know you help them right you may help them to become better then um humility is to depend on the lord always depend on the lord uh ha- and walk in submission and repentance so i'll just say one last thing and close because our time is up i remember i went for a seminar and in that seminar uh, professionals had come and each one was sharing their story about how god has helped them in their career uh, how they have become uh, excellent in their work so uh, one of the people he uh, was in a top it position and you know he was um, uh, leading many people and he shared his testimony he said something that i can never forget he said that when i first started working i was so scared because i didn't know the tasks uh, and i would always pray i would go back home and i would ask my wife to pray and you know we would pray together every day so like that day by day i improved god blessed the work of my hands and i improved but now that he is in a really high position he told all of us he said look no matter how high you go your dependence on god should also keep increasing so now that i know many tasks very well and i'm recognized for the work that i do you will not believe it i pray more now i don't feel like hey i already know it i've done it 1000 times i don't think like that i think god i need you again i'm depending on you more uh, please bless me more if you don't help me i can't do it so i still maintain that attitude before god and i thought that was so amazing right submission unto god uh sel- dependence on the lord and that is the right way of walking in humility and meekness when we are always depending on god whether we are starting some place or we've already reached the pinnacle of where god wants us to be so uh, i'm just going to close with a word of prayer and then we can go ahead take a break there's an online question i'll just answer it in the chat let's pray together mm-hmm. heavenly father we thank you for this time and lord we thank you for a reminder lord that we need to depend on you that father god uh, you resist the proud but you give grace lord to the humble and this morning we just open up our hearts to you lord like david prayed we say god you you uh, see our hearts lord check us through and through if there's any unrighteous way in us oh god father god we repent of it lord remove it from our hearts and establish us oh god in the path of righteousness we commit ourselves into your hands in jesus name we pray amen 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 man thank you everyone please go ahead for your break uh, after 10 minutes we'll have the next session uh, i'll just answer the question here on the chat thank you